hello everyone my name is gajendra deshpande and today i will be presenting a talk on computation techniques for encrypted data using python so these are the contents which we are going to uh, discuss today that is the introduction to homomorphic encryption properties of homomorphic encryption then the summary of homomorphic properties then the example how homomorphic uh, encryption works then experiment using rsl algorithm results then how we can uh, combine uh, machine learning and homomorphic encryption a small experiment then finally the conclusion so let us try to understand homomorphic encryption with the help of a scenario imagine taking all of your credit card statements and uh, logging them into a safe to which you have the only key your statements are now protected from uh, prying eyes this is what encryption does but what if you wanted to analyze your expenditure on groceries in last 12 months first you would have to unlock the safe and uh, retrieve the statements so now the documents are out in the open and they can be read by anyone this is what decryption does so the difference with uh, homomorphic homomorphic encryption is that you can create a report without taking the documents out of the safe there are two basic properties of homomorphic encryption one is additive homomorphic encryption and second one is multiplicate homomorphic encryption uh, not all cryptographic algorithms support both additive and homomorphic encryption so they support either additive or homomorphic when the cryptographic algorithm supports either of the two Uh, properties it is known as partially homomorphic encryption techniques when your cryptographic algorithm supports both that is additive as well as uh, multiplicative and arbitrary uh, computations it is known as fully homomorphic encryption technique so let us understand how additive homomorphic encryption works so you can see here pt1 and pt2 these are the plain text so you are going to add them and encrypt them and its result will be equivalent to the addition of in uh, addition of encryption of individual plain texts and you can also see that there are some identities which are uh, possible then in case of multiplication uh, it's the same so you have got two uh, plain texts you are going to multiply them and uh, encrypt the result and it is equivalent to the product of encryption of individual plain text uh, as i have already told you that uh, uh, not all cryptographic algorithm supports both additive as well as multiplicative so you can see here rsl supports multiplicative a uh, property whereas palier supports um, additive then lgamal supports multiplicative there are some uh, uh, crypto systems such as um, gentry's crypto system so who was a pioneer of uh, fully homomorphic encryption systems so his algorithm supports both additive as well as multiplicative and arbitrary amount of uh, arbitrary computations over uh, encrypted data so let us try to understand the uh, process with an example so in this diagram you can see here that there are two plain text so let's assume the value of p1 as uh, 5 and p2 as 10 then encrypt both p1 and p2 when we encrypt p1 we'll get 50 when we encrypt p2 we'll get 100 so note here that these are uh, just the examples it is not the real encryption and decryption so just for our understanding i have taken very simple example now to add instead of adding the plain text 5 and 10 i'm going to add the encrypted uh, text that is 50 and 100 so when we add 50 and 100 we'll get 150 so when we multiply 50 and 100 we'll get 5000 now note here that 150 and 5000 these are the encrypted results and when you decrypt 150 and uh, 5000 you will get the result as 15 and 50 which are nothing but the uh, addition and subtraction of plain text so this is how uh homomorphic encryption works the major advantage of this technique is that you will be able to utilize the computing power of a compromised device so you need not have to uh, decrypt the data on the compromised device the because if you the moment you decrypt the data your your data will be exposed to compromised device and hackers will be able to steal your data 
so to avoid that to utilize the computational power of uh, compromised device you can follow this approach so what we have done is we have performed experiment with uh, rs algorithm so this is a simple rs algorithm how it works so in rs algorithm uh, first step is to select two large prime numbers and compute their uh, system modulus so that is n is equal to p into q then compute phi of n is equal to p minus 1 into q minus 1 note here that these are the multiplication operations uh, it is the normal algorithm of uh, rsa but what we have done here is we you can see here in this slide we have highlighted two lines in red color so that means these are the uh, two lines where we are performing some kind of experiment we are replacing the multiplication normal multiplication operation with uh, karasuba and fft and checking the performance of uh, rs algorithm how it works the next step is to select at random encryption key e where it should be uh, between 1 and 5 of n and such that gcd of uh, e comma 5 of n is equal to 1 then you need to solve the equation to find the decryption key d so that is e into d is equal to 1 mod phi of n and it d should be within the range of 0 and n then publish the a public key that is p of e comma n and keep the private decryption key of d comma n now to encrypt a message you need to use the formula c is equal to m raised to e mod n to decrypt a message that is to get the plain text back you need to use the formula m is equal to c raised to d mod n so you can see here the normal uh, grade school method has the performance of big o of n square and compare it with karasuba method and fast Fourier transform so when you compare uh, the performance fast Fourier transform and karasuba are performing much better compared to the grade school method on smaller numbers you will not be able to see any difference but if you have a number where the number of digits are thousands in terms of thousands ten thousands at that time karasuba and fast Fourier transform method will give you the better results so for smaller numbers you will not uh, feel the difference because of uh, uh, high computation capacity of a computer so what we have done is we have implemented the multiplication algorithms in two steps. First, the multiplication algorithms in RSA were replaced by Karsuba and FFT methods, one after the other. The next, multiplication operations were performed on encrypted numbers by Karsuba and FFT methods. Now, this is the screenshot of uh, Python code. So, you can see here that two numbers were read, 22 and 87. They were encrypted. So when they were encrypted, you are seeing some large uh, numbers here. So similarly, just for verification, we have decrypted them. And when you multiply 22 and 87, you will get 1914. And you can also see here that we have performed the okay, we have performed the multiplication on the encrypted text. And when we decrypt it, it the result is equivalent to the plain text and this is the result so you can see here that this is the result on a higher source first one is the comparison of multiplication in rsa and second one is the comparison of multiplication on encrypted text now you can see here that grade school method is not performing better it is taking more time but if you observe the results here karsuba is giving you more consistent results so same thing we have also tested on a low resource device that is on raspberry pi so here also you can see there is much difference but the karasuba is giving you more consistent results compared to other two methods next is how we can use machine learning and homomorphic encryption so to do that you need to perform certain steps so, so the first step is the pre-processing so you you need to map the numbers in the data set to the random numbers then encrypt the data set using cryptographic algorithms such as rsa or Payer or any other crypto system depending on your requirement then perform the computations on encrypted data then decrypt the results then finally you also need to perform some kind of post processing because when you apply multi when you apply machine learning you may not get the 
accurate results. So uh, the post processing of rounding up or rounding the the value and remapping the random numbers to the original numbers is required. So the simple experiment has been done using the PyBrain machine learning library. So you can see here, this is a simple example which uh, trains the uh, algorithm uh, for XOR operation. So you can see here, so in this result, we have mapped the 0 and 1 to some random numbers, say 183 and uh, 39. And a neural network was built and it was trained using backward propagation uh, network trainer. And you can see here that we are getting the closer results. So this is how uh, you can use uh, 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 homomorphic encryption with machine learning algorithms so that you may not, you, there is no need to expose the data to the machine learning algorithm also. So conclusion is that homomorphic, homomorphic encryption enables computation on untrusted resource. The computation time over uh, cybertext can be reduced by using Kurzweil and F50 techniques. Training and testing machine learning model may involve additional steps such as pre-processing and post-processing and results into additional computational complexity. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak at PyCon Taiwan. Thank you, organizers. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now is we still have two minutes for the QA section. So uh, may I ask uh, the on-site attendees, do you have any questions want to ask our speakers? Anyone? <laughs> okay. Uh, and also I check uh, online, maybe you don't have questions right now, but uh, you can always uh, uh, give your questions on our Discord channel and I believe that uh, Gajendra will uh, help us to an answer your questions, right? Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank oh. you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, let's uh, give Gajendra a big thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>